President Bola Ahmed Tinubu silent on petroleum ministry as he assigned portfolios to cleared ministers. We'll discuss this extensively on the program today. And of course, we'll also look at uh, the uh, challenges that the onion producer are facing through due to the crisis in Niger Republic. Welcome to, the, to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogo. We take our business top stories. Glad to have you back. Quickly, we give you stock market data as it went down yesterday on the floor of the Nigerian stock market. The market again closed negative 0.47 percent. It went down volume of trade to 91.714 million uh, volume of trade value at 7.432 billion naira in the days of our 6,200. 13. Of course, the market car, I mean the oil share index, lost about 303 basis points yesterday to close negative. They will look at the losers on the table, on the, the gainers, I mean, um, I beg your pardon. Of course, internal uh, oil uh, on, the, on the gainers table today, 10% it gained. Uh, Computer Warehouse Group also gained 8.61%. Uh, 3 Naira, uh, 28 Kobo, it ended on the day. Of course, FTN Kogo is back on the gainers table after a long while, 6.97%. Uh, percent, uh, of course, it gained to close at 2 Naira. 15 cobalt there we look at it losers the top losers indeed of course name insurance there a sano assurance of course guineans all on the losing side they look at the top traded equities as it is of course guarantee trust bank uh, holdings there the mother company of uh, GTB or GITCO, you may, you may call it, for 21.7 million volume of shares of that company were traded. Universal Insurance Company also 22.8 million shares. And of course, United Bank for Africa, 22.6 million volume of shares. How are the rest of Africa doing indeed? Of course, uh, uh, of course, it makes bag as well as it were yesterday. No uh, most changes. GSE again went further than uh, uh, yesterday by 0.12%. GSE in Ghana, of course, up a little bit again, 0.09%. And of course, in Ghana, uh, in, uh, in Nairobi, I beg your pardon, 2.68% as the biggest losers are from the market we're actually looking at today on the continent. This is how the Africa uh, markets across Africa are doing right now. Of course, as, the, as usual, the, the trading is on and we'll give you updates as uh, the show, of course, progresses. But for now, we take a very quick break. When we return, we'll go into our discussion.
glad to have you back. It's the Business Daily right here on Trust Television. Now, of course, the new ministers have been assigned their portfolios. Of course, Nigerians are expect. I mean, they are expected to keep the uh, to kick off work and of course to keep the economy running for a very long time many people have been worried about the delay in assigning uh, ministers to their various ministries quite a whole lot of changes there if you can get the graphics on the screen there quite a whole lot of changes to the ministry the ministry of petroleum for example was divided into two you have the ministry of petroleum uh, resources and of course you have the minister the ministry of gas resources uh, uh, as well so quite a, a, a few uh, changes there that we have seen i uh, want to look look at get some reactions to this uh, move by the president yesterday and I have joining me from Brittany kebby kebby state a human rights activist and a public affairs analyst comrade usman mohammed anache good morning comrade yeah, good morning yes glad to have you on the show let's quickly get your reaction we now have new ministers <coughs> yes we have new ministers uh but actually what we are expecting is what we have not seen. The, the, the ministers, actually, we didn't expect this type of list. The, the list has given us some mixed reactions because we have so many people that we don't even accept, expect them to be on that list. But unfortunately, unfortunately they were among the, the, the ministers. Some of them can perform, but some of them actually even himself, Mr. President, no, they cannot perform. Definitely. So we have, we have seen a, 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 something that is confusing Nigerians, like a, 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 most of the ministers, uh, the former governors, some who doesn't have experience in the fields where they are attached, and um, so forth and so forth. So so many things has, has, has happened in that list. So, so we are not expecting uh, much of this list, even though some of them are, are experts in their fields, uh, like Central Bank, and the Minister of Finance, like a Minister of Justice, like a FCT, but actually most of the ministers, we don't think this list is, uh, is what Nigerians are yearning, yearning about. Some of us are not supposed to be ministers. Comrade, I know you are a human rights activist, and of course you're bound to criticize actions and inaction of government. But let's look at the, 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 your former mm -hmm. governor, who is a minister now in the ministry of, of, of course, uh, 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 under the minister, I mean, is a senior minister, he is now in the budget there. Uh, what do you think should be the immediate tax for him? He did very well when he was your governor, right? <coughs> no. <coughs> uh, he didn't do well. That is what I'm saying. For example, if you come to KB State, you discover that, you discover what I'm actually saying. This is not something that everybody knows it. Eight years in Cape State, we don't have a single capital project. Most of the, most of the money used in the so-called Ampo Borua were being siphoned. In fact, the Cape State money was, 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 was totally, it was totally siphoned without any project and uh, again leaving behind a debt to, 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 to the incoming governor. In fact, uh, for the past eight years, when you come to Kebbi State, it's still the same as it is before you come to power. And uh, to me, I don't think somebody who spent eight years as governor, uh, chairman governor's forum, uh, that cannot even win his own ward in the election, uh, regardless of his local government, was the territorial zone, and, and, and just to become an appointed a, a, a minister. I, I don't think I, I don't think uh, that that is, that is justified to to pick him from KB State as, as the candidate of the minister. Even though I don't know what the Mr. President is thinking about it, but as far as KB people are concerned, actually, I don't think it's favorable for for, for KB State. Uh, uh, comrade, if you look at his pedigree, yeah, he has, uh, uh, some who argue with you that uh, he has done a lot, I could recall, as a governor, quite a lot of investment went into agriculture, and of course, I, I remember the, the uh, famous partnership between KB and Lagos State that gave us the, the lake rice. Uh, I still uh, remember that vividly. Many who argue with you uh, in terms of uh, his capacity to deliver. The lake rice you are talking of, was purchased by his predecessors, his predecessors, the person in uh, uh, let's say it was Manasa Manajibari. He's the one that uh, purchased the rice 
Look, let me tell you what happened at that, that leg rise we are talking of. The, the earlier administration encouraged dry season farming, introduced dry season farming in Cape State, especially more rice. So they distributed uh, fertilizer and the uh, water pumps free to the farmers. Then they established a rice mill, Labana, that where these farmers, after they have harvest, they will deposit their harvest and then they, they will process this rice. That is the beginning of rice revolution in, in Kibbe State. And uh, then uh, after Ali Ru has gone, the Said administration come in. When Said administration come in, this bumper harvest by the farmers were already on. The farmers are harvested rice uh, 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 so very much in Kibbe State. So there was time when the, the, the price of rice falls down and the farmers cannot gain, cannot gain profit from what they have harvested. So the Eden Asamu administration decided to, to buy a bag of rice at the rate of 10,000, because that time the dealers are buying at the rate of 5,000. So the Said Unasamu administration decided to buy it at 10,000 so that the farmers can gain the profit. So it, it, it is that rice that was stopped. That time I was in Kamba, the rice was with we purchased and the government would go there and pick the rice, store it in the store. It was the rice, this very rice that was was, was inherited by the by the Atiku administration that come after Sebidu. It was the rice that he used to sell to Lagos, not the rice that was farmed during his time. So this is the scenario behind that rice. Okay, uh, comrade, let's look at the larger picture now. Uh, of course, the portfolio has been assigned to various ministers. You have uh, uh, Mr. Wale doing the uh, Minister of Finance. We have uh, Shaibu A. A. Awudu there in the Minister of Steel Development. And of course, quite a whole lot of new ministries that we have. You have uh, Bosu Tijani, Minister of Communication, of course, and of course, Digital Economy, a whole lot of restructuring that we are seeing. How do you think uh, this is going to change the direction in which the economy will go? Yes, that of finance, I'm more confident that he will perform. Some of these people you mentioned, most of them, I don't know their, their capabilities, so I cannot judge them. But that of finance, I know his capability, I know he can perform. Where you, you're supposed to ask me is defense. You know, we are having security issue. Where the two former governors were given the minister of state and the minister and the, and the senior minister and they have no background whatsoever, whatsoever of being a security, either agent or whatever, apart from being the governors of their, of, their, of their various states. So these are some of the issues. Indeed, these are some of the issues you pointed out. Uh, but the, the former governors that you mentioned were former chief security officers of their, various, of their states. Probably they know the terrain better. Probably that is why uh, the president deemed it fit to hand them that responsibility. Don't you think we should give them time before we start criticizing? Hey, we can give them time. But if he says so, I don't think the Minister of State's Defense will leave the way he lived if he knows the terrain. He know the terrain, but look at the way he left Zambara. Is it the person that cannot... The, the, he was even once said that he's no more the chief security of his, uh, of his state. Why is he saying that? Now he's minister of state defense. So you can't have somebody who cannot solve the, the, the problem of security in his own state, who has no background whatsoever of being a security uh, to become just both the two ministers, None of them has any, uh, any qualification. I don't think, anyway, we can give them time, as you said, to see. But actually, these are not the type of people who are expecting Mr. President to appoint as ministers. But we want him to watch them closely so that in case of any uh, uh, deviation from the, from the real point or the real actual issues, then the change may, 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 may occur. Because we don't want, the, as, as far as they are now not the chief executives, they are now ministers, they are civil servants, they have to be according to the ministry's rules. So let us give them time, as you said, and see. We are watching. Okay, comrade. Uh, let's, look, let's leave the minister now and talk about the crisis in uh, Niger and how it is affecting uh, economy in that part of the country. You know, about six northern states, including KB states, where you are sharing yes. a boundary with uh, 
Niger yes. Republic. So what do you think now? Uh, the sanction has been imposed by ECOWAS, uh, by ECOWAS and of course many other uh, uh, partners of, uh, uh, of Africa have also imposed sanction on, on Niger because of the coup that happened a couple of weeks ago. How do you think this is impacting negatively on the economy and means of livelihood of Nigeria and by, uh, in particular the northern Nigeria? Uh, the, the, the sanction is imposed on Niger, but actually the sanction is imposed on northern Nigeria, not on Niger. Because all our routes that bring goods, you know, in here in the far north, we usually use the cotton port to bring all our cargoes into our states. So these cargoes all pass through Niger Republic before they reach Kano, Kasena, including even Kaduna came here, Zampara, Sokoto. So all our cargoes here were easily uh, passing through Niger to our own places. So the, 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 the sanction posed on Niger is not on Niger. It's posed on Nigerians because we are suffering more than them. Look at just, just the day that the, this, this sanction was imposed. Rice just jumped up the price by 30%. Dinkon, millet, mess, pass, the rest were by 30%, within two days of that sanction. So it's not uh, only uh, the sanction is, is imposed on Nigeria. And we are not expecting uh, Mr. President, as a civilian president, to take a military approach just by mere having a little problem or change of government instead of calling the, 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 the democratic solution of solving problems. So we have seen a military approach to that uh, the, the, the situation. The coup d'état has already occurred in Niger. Okay, since the coup d'état has already occurred, and the most of our leaders in Africa, not only in West Africa or Nigeria, are pursuing democracy, which we are trying to, to, to defend. So instead of using democratic way to, to solve it, the, uh, the, 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 the president of Nigeria uh, and the president of Air Force take a military uh, approach. To, to, to the military junta in, in, in Niger. And even we have taken the political approach earlier, we will not have been suffering like this now. Because come to KD, come and see the way we are suffering seriously because of this closure of the, of, of, of the, of the Niger border. Already that is what the, the previous administration of Muhammad Bahari did to cripple all economic activities in those states by closing the land borders. Now we are happy when Mr. President opened this land border. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the borders were already uh, again, uh, again closed, and all the all the, the the border guards are now facing maltreating the masses. In fact, uh, if now, as for example, now you go to Kamba, which is a border town in Nigeria, just buy a bag of foreign rice from Kamba to Brunigeli, you will be arrested, and people have nothing to eat. People are seriously suffering. You see, so many families cannot even eat at once. Because of this closure of the border. So, we are, I will, on this juncture, I want to appeal to Mr. President to please, a matter of emergency, a matter of emergency, open this border so that we can have food. Look at, we produce rice in Kibi. We are importing rice from uh, Kotono. Now, we are supplying the South. Now, here in Brunei Kibi, the rice is, is, is 42,000, 43,000. How do you expect it when we take it from here to, let's say, Abuja or, or in the hinterland? How much it will cost? And the, the saddest part of it, no simple salary was increased but to any civil servant in the whole federation. Open all this uh, increase in price of sharply of 30% within the week. No simple salary is increased. No simple palliative, which is promised by Mr. President for the past three weeks, has arrived. No anything to caution the effect. It's only the suffering that is increasing day by day. So we are appealing, please, let Mr. President, he's president of Nigeria, not Niger. Let us look out at us. Let, let the problem of Niger not, not just bring us unwanted suffering. Uh, Nigeria is dying in their homes just because of, of Niger. Niger. Right, that is a, a very passionate appeal there to, to the government. You've talked about uh, quite a whole lot uh, in terms of inflation, the food prices and everything has gone up uh, even before the uh, land border was closed by the president. What, they are, what though that has done now has even aggravated, it has made it worse that, than it were before. Now, Niger has been uh, a partner 
uh, with Nigeria for a very, very long time. If you look at the history of our relationship, there are some uh, some Nigerians who are yes. half Niger and indeed half Nigeria because of a lot of itamari that happened, especially along borders uh, communities. Now that this coup has taken place, and of course, ECOWAS has introduced an economic sanction on the country, and we are seeing the impact that is having largely on both uh, countries. Even in Niger, there's quite a lot of complaint. The electricity was cut, and of course, uh, uh, the food supply from Nigeria. We saw the onion, uh, most onion trucks and other uh, commodities not being able to get to Niger because of the border closure. Now, what do you think now, if uh, as a citizen of Niger who relies on food, all electricity coming from Nigeria. What do you think they should be thinking about right now? The, the citizens of Nigeria now will be thinking that Nigeria is not doing them a favor. Uh, long time early, inter, inter, intermarriage, as you said. Uh, right now, I that I'm speaking with you here now, one of my village was divided into two. Half is in Niger, half of us in Nigeria. It's only a road that uh, uh, divided us, Kari Jantulu. And the market we have there is also divided into two. Half is Nigeria, the other side is Niger. In our own Nigerian side, we accepted Sefa, we accepted uh, Nera. So all these things now have stopped. The, the, the losses cannot be quantified. It cannot be quantified. The impact of this, uh, the Niger people are suffering because most of all their uh, goods they are using in their country is coming from Nigeria. Nigeria feed all what they use. In turn, we import foods from there, from them. We use cotton pot, as I said earlier, through them. Now, it is collateral damage, serious collateral damage. The, the damage in Niger is, is it, can, it cannot be even measured. Because the people has nothing to eat, the, 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 there is no power, the power was cut off, the, 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 those businesses have stopped. The, the normal relationship between humans, that, that is why sometimes I, 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 would, I, I would start thinking that is our governments after our welfare, is it only our governments are just increasing our sufferings? Why is it uh, uh, the, 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 that our government are only bringing issues and, and, and the programs that are detriment to, to, to the existence of a poor man? This is the problem of people start thinking of why the democracy. It is this, this, this negative impact that used to, 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 to influence people to start thinking negatively on the democracy. That if this is a democracy, then why are we in democracy? Is it not going with the people? Is it not what the people want? Why somebody should just take a decision that will affect over 40 to 50 million people at once, suffering, dying, and the people are saying, and nobody is saying anything. Indeed, uh, uh, so so a worried citizen. There, of course, you are really talking as a comrade. Indeed, uh, let's anchor on this now. KB State is one state that is well positioned in terms of uh, 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 well positioned in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, generating its own IGR. It's an agrarian state. It's a state that is well known with the Argungu fishing festival and so many other things that government yes. can actually uh, uh, use or you know to uh, to raise revenue to support the allocation coming from the federal government how well do you think the government both in the past and the current government is doing who are those potentials that we have in that state so i'm from Arungu emirates quite okay uh you see all those things that you know that are taking place before are no more taking place. Even the Arungu Fishing Festival is now not an annual event. Formerly, it was an annual event that generates a lot of revenue to the state. But now, it's not an annual event. It's sometimes a two to three years, sometimes four, sometimes. That's how it is. Uh, and the internally generated revenue in Kelly State is very low. So the government is not generating the revenue that will be enough to run the government. Our, the Cape State government mostly depends on the allocation from the federation account 
and uh, 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 the money from other donor agencies that the, the state is using. The, our internally generated revenue is very low because we are not using our mechanism very well. Why we are not using the uh, revenue generation mechanism very well is because the government is not yielding the democratic result to the people. Because if now you, 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 you impose so many taxes, so many revenues, close all the cages, then the masses will ask you, how do you spend those taxes? And the most of the people, most of the people uh, coming into the government, especially the previous administration, doesn't want that question. So since they don't want that question from people, they ignore people, the, 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 the revenue is leaking all over. So the government didn't mind because the people would not come and say, where is our revenue? Right. It is what they generated from the, the federal government uh, at the monthly allocation. And locally, it was even the former minister of uh, finance, Jamie Adjoson, that started publishing, started publishing the allocation to states. If not, right. we don't even know what was allocated to the to, to state. Absolutely. So, Gaskia, that revenue Comrade, state is not... Uh, Osman Mohamed Anache, a public affairs analyst, and of course a human rights activist, talking to us all the way from Brini KB in KB states. Well, with that is a wrap on the show today. Join us tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogun.